Hey guys, Jesse here from Team Stomper Grounds bringing you another battle report. I have Matt Serino, one of our players. So Matt, first, uh, I want to go into your list. You're playing the Grey Knight Set Star. We've been featuring it a lot. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I know why. You know why. Tell the internet why. It's good. Um, so, basic idea, 23 psychic dice a turn. Um, and the big thing with psychic phase is you're not... It's not like before where you're going to get every power off, but 23 plus your D6 means you're getting your, like, four, like, three to five important powers a turn. Uh, so then you have a good core back online to begin with out of Grey Knights. So Librarian's good. He's got two up in Vault Save with the Warding Staff. Cody has his Cody has. Um, helps out a lot. Seizing just winds up becoming, you know, every once in a while pops his head up. I'll be expecting you. Always not bad. Um, six Razorbacks. All with Psychers. So the Razorbacks all know Banishment and Sanctuary. Banishment's really good. You play at random demon matchup, start shooting Banishments out. Uh, each Psyker gets a roll in Telepathy. So, you know, you're getting potential extra Invises, Terrifies, and then they all get Psychic Shrieks. So you have six Psychic Shrieks in your back line. So you have a lot of backfield defense out of your three-man henchmen. A lot more than you would be used to if you've played Grey Knights or played against Grey Knights in 5th edition. So with that in mind, we already went ahead and we started the pregame. So you know your Psychic Powers, you know deployment and everything like that. Tell me what you think going into this matchup. Um, you're playing Wave Serpents. What was yeah. your number one game plan? Uh, well, so my, my game plan against Wave Serpents. Hope to get ignore cover. Hope to get Twin Link, which I'm guaranteed to get Priceless because Cody is going to keep rolling in Div anyway. Um, be able to gate up, kind of get in their face, and just start picking at Wave Serpents. Pretty much, pretty much keep them away from my Dreadnoughts. Um, keep them away from my Dreads and my Razorbacks. Get in his back line and cause havoc. Make him... React to me because in theory, you know, I have one super powerful list. Everything else is kind of okay. Like the dreads are okay. The Razorbacks kind of suck against them. Um, they're good at cleaning up his troops, like the Dire Avengers once they come out. Uh, but pretty much be able to force force him on the defensive. So that means when the Wraith Knights come in, the Wraith Knights either need to react to me mm -hmm. or they try to flank around me. And then normally, if I have gate, I can just kind of gate back and play Wraith Knight defense. So you say normally if you have gate. Yes. So we've already done our pregame. Yes. Justin has the objective advantage. So yeah, it's Vanguard. And you have already determined yeah. the second So it's powers. Vanguard, which means he can be really far back if he wants. In theory, it's the farthest he can be away, minus Hammer and Anvil. Um, he's going to... So it's that, and I, I'm, I, he has two objectives to my one, and my psychic powers... My librarian didn't get gate. Um, he's a pile of duty. That He has Sanctuary. That's about all he's actually probably going to cast this game. Um, then Cody has got just Prescience, and uh, so no perfect timing. He has Misfortune and Precog. And then Tiggy bailed me out, got me perfect timing, got me forewarning, and got me press or got me Invis. So I have no gate. Um, the big debate was going versus Invis versus gate. I, I feel like, especially because it's Vanguard, I can kind of get, especially if I get to deploy first, kind of deploy the sense in the middle. And kind of just get to the middle and create this like circle of death. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Invis was more important because protecting myself. Um, Gate could wind up being more important because it let me get around and chase him. But if I can get the first deployment, I can kind of get to the center and create that circle and force him to kind of use that as like a six inch, well, 30 inch effective death range and make him get away from me um, and try to protect my guys. What is your what is your prediction in the matchup? Normally, under Average circumstances, I think it's in my favor. I think all my psychic powers and my shooting from the ground set in general is good. I think everything pregame has kind of gone against me. Um, it only could go worse if I didn't get perfect timing in Invis. Um, you know, I in perfect timing being the most important of all my psychic spells in this game. Uh, but like he is objective in, so I have to now. Now there's no question I have to get offensive. You know, he's looking at uh, ten objective secure or eight objective secured things on his side of the field that I have to go hunt now. Um, he's got that, uh, he's got objective advantage, my psychic powers kind of stink. That's the biggest thing. So, like, right now, it's, it's going to come down to dice. It really is. Um, the dice have been against me so far. If I can get good shooting, depending on how everything goes, maybe it'll turn back in my favor. But right now, I think it's a little bit tipped towards Justin. But, again, it's going to come down to dice, I think, like well, every game. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, All right guys, so we're here bringing you another battle point. I'm with Justin Cook, a wave Hi. server player. Justin, tell me a little bit about your about your list. Uh, well, Wave Serpents um, got good. I know they were really bad in 6th edition, and they were totally never used by anybody. 
Uh, that's a lie because they were, <laughs> they were they were seriously like the best tank in sixth edition, and in an still, edition that was very harsh to vehicles at that. Yeah, and they and then they got a three up all the time cover save basically. But as long as you move. As long as you move, we found that out. Yeah, you can't you can't start it's the game. Not, we and found not, that out. You didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I knew we that. found I that you. out by he found that out like weeks ago, and then he was like, "Hey, Justin, screw you." Um, but anyway, when so came out. yeah, so yeah, when Eldar came out. So, uh, yeah, me so, as a team, me and you especially, um, yep. and DeFranza, we saw a battle report with him, but me and you especially have been championing the Wave Serpent build. Um, you know, I, I've sat down so far with Matt Serino with his Grand Knight Scent list, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it's a, it's a very, very tough list. It's a very good list. The list that we as a team are thinking is going to, you know, be popular in the meta. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and Serino has been playing it, you know, in and out, uh, and it's been doing well for him. You are on the Wave Serpent build, so am I. We, we both have some slight variations. So, first of all, tell me, why Wraith Knights? Uh, I like the Wraith Knights because they're durable. They're a lot more durable than, say, Warwalkers. I know you're doing the Warwalkers. Um, but you also have two extra units of Dire Avengers in your list, which I like. It's good. It's good to have the extra objective secured. Um, but the Wraith Knights are more durable. It offers you a durable Warlord that you can hide and can still do stuff during the game because he does still have two 36-inch range guns that can kill tanks. Uh, and he's not a joke in close combat. He can just run up there, and he's strength 10, so you don't need to smash with him. Uh, smash got a nerf this edition, and Wraith Knights just don't care because the strength 10 attacks that mm-hmm. they just have just punch through vehicles. So going into this matchup, you have the objective advantage. Mm-hmm. You have the biggest psychic presence I've ever seen in any army, I know, IE0. You, IE0, yeah. And you're playing Eldar. That's right. Uh, playing Eldar with no psychics. And you've seen the psychic powers. How do you think this game's going to go for you? Well, he doesn't have gates, so that means I can deploy. Um, I can deploy and try to kind of lead his uh, Centurion Star around the table. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to do anything because I do have the mobility advantage. It's really going to come down to what the Dreadnoughts manage to do to me. Uh, I'm really. I need to kill a Dreadnought a turn for the first two turns of the game at least. Uh, you know, knock two of them out. If I can knock all three of them out by turn two, I think it's just it's just game basically. Uh, because the Razorbacks won't kill the Wave Serpents. Uh, they just won't. At least reliably. Yeah, yeah no. I mean, I mean, they can glance them out. Exactly. I mean, there's sixes. A, yeah. there, and there's a ton of fire there, that you can still It's really going exactly, to come down, it's really gonna come down to what the Dreadnoughts do. Uh, and if I can kill the Dreadnoughts and he doesn't manage to kill my Wave Serpents quickly with them, I'll just probably roll them. Uh, but if he had Gate, it would be a lot different because he would be in my face every turn. He has Mystics and he has uh, Servo Skulls. Um, that'll just be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm here. And now I'm shooting you to death. And now I'm here. And now I'm here. And then as and soon I'm as here. you threaten his backfield, he could just, without, Gain over and with, no, with yeah. no you know, penalty because of that mystic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very strong. I also, you know, I think the two strongest builds coming out of the edition right now mm-hmm. are this Grey Knight Scent build and Wave Serpent yeah. with Necrons closely I, on people's tails. Yeah, and I think people are making a really big deal about the Demon Factory. Uh, I think both of these lists have really good tools to deal with Demon Factory, i.e. ignore cover and a lot of shooting. Uh, and Demon Factory, as good as it is for building units, it still doesn't have any punch to it. Grav doesn't Grav doesn't do that great against it, but Grav, but his army also has banishment, like a lot of banishment, yeah. and he also has a unit that I think an entire demon army charging that unit will do poor at best against it because of banishment, because of sanctuary, because of the three psychers that will and just slaughter what it. What Grav's not good against, Hurricane Bolters excel at. Exactly. And, yeah, and so demon horde. And, and so I pump dice. out I pump out a bunch of fiends or yep. screamers or whatever. That's great. Ignore cover twilight bolters. Yeah, exactly. I mean uh, and my list does a very similar thing because it has all the serpent shields. It's just like, oh great, you spawned like five hundred extra yep. points of demons, let's serpent shield the crap. Yeah, I definitely think uh, I definitely think they're gonna be uh, Yeah, so you... I think our I think our three best builds right now, I think Factory's still up there. I think that, that kind of like thirty nine dice in a in a psychic phase demon like make ten new units of demons a turn thing is cool. Uh, but I definitely think like Wave Serpents, the Grey Knight Grab Sense are really strong. Um, some form of invisible blob and uh, Necron AV thirteen wall. If you wanted to say five lists to watch out for in the start of this edition those would be the five lists, Demons, uh, yep. Grey Knights, IG, Eldar, we're fo- and Prons. We're focusing heavy on two of them right now. Yep. So, All right, guys, we're going to go into the game. All right. Hey, guys, it's Chance here. And Jesse. And we're bringing you guys another battle report. we got Justin Cook versus Matt Serena. we got a little bit of Serpent Spam versus some uh, Grey Knight Scent Star. Now it's 
we got some interesting choices in both these lists. We got Justin Cook running the double Wraith Knight as opposed to like the Defranza Super Serpent Spam, not the Nine Serpents. And it's uh, different than the Serpent Spam I'm currently working on as well. That is uh, has War Walkers behind it. Now, as we as I brought up in our pregame interviews, chance uh, you were not here for that. That's why I had to step in. By the way, Thanks. I think I stole your tagline. Thanks. Uh, let's see on the battlefield. Or I'm all right with it. Uh, anyway, so I brought up uh, we're featuring the Green Knight Ten Star because uh, I am a firm believer in the strength of this list. I I sat down when they released the idea of Grey Knights being Battle Brothers, and Matt turned around to me and said, I want to put Cody as in a, in a Scent Star. And I went, no, 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 no. You want to put a Scent Star in a Grey Knight army. And yeah. me and him sat down, we worked on his list, and he's been playing it nonstop. Yeah, he's absolutely huge. We talk about, and I hate to keep harping on it, but they're super good in the Psychic Phase. Grey Knights are super good in the Psychic Phase. And the nice thing about it is, unlike the Demon Factory, it's super good in the Psychic Phase, but has a lot of kill backing it up. Mm -hmm. So we see here, it's Vanguard Deployment. Uh, Justin actually has the objective advantage. In the top, you'll see a Stomping Grounds. You see a Stomping Grounds. Tactical uh, Objective Marker. Tactical Objective Marker. And there's another Tactical Objective Marker in the ruins here on the bottom where those three Serpents are. And then the other side, there's two Dreadnoughts uh, that are standing above a Tactical Objective. So the two to one Tactical Objective thing. But we just saw... Matt sees. No, he did have a 5 plus re rollable CZ initiative because of his Warlord trait. Nope. But he and he has Cody as. Like yeah, exactly. Rolled he a natural 6 anyway. Rolls the boss 6, which if you know Matt Serena, you know he cannot roll dice to save his life. So, this is extremely important for Justin. He deployed very aggressive because he did not get gate. He got invisibility, he got his other spells, but he didn't get gate. Uh, on on any of his psychers this game, which meant he was losing a lot of mobility, so he absolutely had to seize, had to knock out a couple wave serpents. Because if he didn't, then Justin has the, the objective advantage, and he has a mobility advantage, and he could just kind of kite those guys around. I remind, remember, Justin's army moves 30 inches a turn. Matt's effective range is 30 inches. So, you know, it's real hard for Matt to keep his sense in an effective range. See, it's the idea where if you're Justin, we know Justin's a very cerebral player. He thinks about everything that he's doing every single turn. He wants to map out what you're going to do and then react to it before you even think about it. When you get seized on as a player, it kind of throws that out of whack. You got to make sure you're not clinging to your past strategies and that sort of thing. And if you're Justin, you go, well, all right, well, I thought I would have two more wave serpents this game. Yeah, so... Matt managed to take out two Wave Serpents, one with Dreadnoughts. Justin kind of scooted over, uh, stayed a little bit out of out of scent range. I mean, there's still, I think, one scent in range here, uh, but there's still all three of those Dreadnoughts. His shooting was very ineffectual going back. And, and what's going to end up happening is you see Matt kind of repositioning himself. Well, yeah, we kind of take it to where Matt had to overextend and get the, the sort of first turn alpha strike. But he's not overcommitting and letting himself get kited the entire way around the table. Exactly. He's already shifting his focus. And we see, like, the dreads and things just start hammering into these to these uh, wave servants. We already said, like, Jink is an extremely important r role. The problem is it's still hard to... Anybody who's played Marines knows a three-up save only goes so far. Mm -hmm. Now, it's really good when that three-up save is on a Wave Serpent, so Small Arms isn't doing it. Yeah. But when you're slinging mass shots, you can deal with them downrange. Between the Dreadnoughts, between just the amount of Razorback shots, you're going to get a couple glances in, yeah. stuff like that. And then the Centurions, uh, it really it really enabled enabled Matt to kind of to kind of capitalize here and pick off two more dread or two more wave serpents immobilize one and and kill one that's effectively picking two off well he just has a huge amount of firepower and you see kind of with the centurion star if you were there around last edition if you could kind of just move her especially when they didn't get gate if you could move around and make sure the sense star can't kill multiple things a turn you're usually all right the problem is and i i love it i like when 40k has uh dreadnoughts in it I think Dreadnoughts are awesome. I think they're cool for the the game. I like them as models, that sort of thing. But you can kind of have them anchor your back line. And that way, you sort of have something back at home base where the Centurion Star can literally just start moving off and picking off Wave Serpents. So that kind of makes it a little bit harder because Justin's natural instinct is going to be, well, I'm down firepower. I need to win the game somehow. And he's going to try and win the game by taking pot shots, staying on the outside, kiting Matt around. And Matt's actually doing a really good job of 
trying to maintain the area threat around the center of that table. So no matter where Justin goes, there's a 24 inch range of those those grab guns and those grab cannons just taking things out. Exactly. So Matt's already repositioned with his outflanking scouts and things. Came in on this side. He's basically taking the objective and turned this into a Dawn of War deployment, which is now giving him the objective advantage. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Justin's Warlord Wraith Knight is kind of moving around trying to get down to start threatening his range. But again, Justin has to keep that Warlord Wraith Knight, because he's again, it has to keep that Warlord outside of 30 inches, which means that Warlord's not really able to lend much effective fire. And remember, with the visibility, it's kind of a wasted a wasted opportunity for him to shoot at the, the yeah. sets. I mean, we've talked about how good invisibility is and how good invisibility is on a unit that can take out multiple transports a turn. And we've talked about how good transports are in this edition. And you see that those guys hop out of the Serpents not going to do a whole lot. No, because they get shredded immediately by the by the Shrink 6 AP4 side-bolted heavy bolters. I mean, those Dire Avengers only have a 4-up save, so it gets right through that save. I mean, Matt just making quick work. He's moving his Sense Star again towards the middle of the table. Uh, one, one key flaw that I think does happen here uh, for Justin is there's a key turn where Matt actually, it's this turn, Matt actually fails his invisibility. And instead of kind of uh, uh, instead of kind of dumping some fire into the sensor, that's where you dump the fire in because now if you kill off that that furthest up scout or scent, he's the only one that's going to be able to really get effective range for the yeah. next two turns on some of your other targets. Um, so you kind of you know you kind of want to take your fire that's coming and now you know lay in some fire. He fell down this. Yeah. So now the big thing is is those D cannons, strength ten, AP two. So it's ignoring the armor, and it's it's instanting it's instant killing out of set. So if he can land two hits and two wounds, uh, let alone from both wraith knights, that could potentially. So we have one two cents. Then his librarian, who's his warlord, he does have a two up and vulnerable, but it's still instant that. So he might just look to look out sir that to another cent. So you know you could potentially kill three yeah. cents. Exactly. If you can get the cents off the table, a librarian one centurion not going to be nearly as big of a problem but do you think justin kind of got in his own head a little bit and he's going well i'm not i'm operating at like half firepower like 60 percent firepower not now. even that he's yeah he's way below all of his do you think do you think he just he's so afraid of all inning when all innings probably his best decision uh, yeah he's really right now he's trying to play to try to get he, he's really trying to outplay matt and the problem is is matt's a very good player as well and there's not much in the in the outplay factor and he's trying to do a lot of like finesse -y things, and by but the problem is is by doing this this finesse move, you know, it, it really it works, but there's a, there's a problem. Yeah. If you lose any more of your mobility, you don't have much. You have one wave serpent. Yeah. If you lose any more of your mobility, you're kind of done. And the problem is is Justin did lose his mobility. That wave serpent got stunned, which means it doesn't move for a turn. And now it's basically a free turn to be shot at. Had he dumped his fire into those those grav sense, like I said, that wave serpent wouldn't be able to get shot, neither would his warlord at all. And those sense will put wounds on right things like it's nobody's business. And now, if you're not running those and you're able to just keep the pressure, if you don't have the centurions, he doesn't have an answer to your wraith knights, so you kind of force him down his throat. Yeah, it's pretty much one of these things where we see Matt Matt wants to be aggressive, but he pulled the reins back. He didn't start he didn't start taking those centurions up north in the middle of the table just to try and take out some of the serpents. He he really managed his range really well in this game. Mm -hmm. Because he understands, hey, I have a star, it's in the middle of the field. You need to answer me. And it's and I think Justin's flaw in the game right now is just it's paralysis by analysis. He stayed back and he tried to be too tentative, just got everything picked off. I mean we look at it and the Wraith Knights are cool, they come in late and everything like that, but when you're Justin and you sit there, you're like, oh, I got seized on. Oh, my serpents got killed. What are you going to do? Well, the idea is you can't just sit there and go, well, really sucks. Well, I got another wave serpent killed. Well, that really sucks. And I feel like Justin may have thought, well, as the game goes on, maybe I got a better shot, but we saw that sense star is just too good right now. Yeah, I mean, not killing, not taking the opportunity he had to, to put some hurting on the major damage dealer uh, really kind of killed it for him. Yeah, definitely. And we see Matt's running around. He's, oh, he's going to take some right knights off the table. How many wounds did he cause, actually? He caused uh, five wounds to the Warlord and 16 wounds to the Yellow Right Knights. So I actually made him put it back on the table and kill them both twice over. Yeah, they're 17 wound models, right? Nope! <laughs>